All right. This is concept 6.3. This is part two of the lecture. Um, so within the nucleus, we know that it has all the genes, and it's wrapped by a nuclear envelope separating the contents. Uh, this nuclear envelope is actually the same as the plasma membrane. Uh, you can see just outside the nuclear envelope uh, is the uh, endoplasmic reticulum, rough and smooth. And here you see nuclear pores uh, that uh, are part of the nuclear envelope, allowing things in and out, including uh, messenger RNA, which we'll learn at a later date. Uh, ribosomes themselves are made of two things, rRNA, or ribosomal RNA, and protein. They actually are not wrapped in a membrane, uh, like all the other organelles. And they are um, conserved in prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Uh, they do carry out protein synthesis, and at a later date, we'll, we'll show you how this large subunit and small unit come to play, uh, and how they read the messenger RNA, or mRNA. Um, and you'll also notice that some ribosomes are free, meaning they're floating around in the cytosol, and some are bound ribosomes. Now, bound ribosomes are bound to the endoplasmic reticulum, and the proteins that they make will go into the ER, which will make their way to the Golgi and then out of the cell. So they're destined for the endomembrane system and sent out of the cell to other cells. Free ribosomes, when they make proteins, those proteins are for that one cell where the ribosomes are. So they stay home, so to speak. Uh, 6.4, the endomembrane system. So here we have the ER, uh, which includes smooth ER. It's smooth because it lacks ribosomes. And rough ER, which contains ribosomes. And you see a diagram of it there. It's always right next to the uh, nuclear membrane because it has to receive the uh, messenger RNA to continue the production of uh, proteins from those ribosomes that are attached, at least to the rough. Smooth ER has a number of functions. Uh, one of the main ones is that it synthesizes lipids. Uh, it helps to metabolize carbohydrates. It also stores calcium. We'll see that much, much later. And it helps to detoxify poisons, which in fact, one interesting little side note, um, people who do uh, more drugs or take uh, or drink more alcohol have a higher number of smooth ER in their liver cells because it helps to detoxify those poisons. Um, it's actually very easily seen under the microscope. Rough ER has bound ribosomes, and again, it just produces proteins and uh, membranes that will surround the proteins that then get transported by vesicles over to the Golgi apparatus for further packaging. And here we have the Golgi apparatus. It receives those transport vesicles from the ER. Um, and the Golgi is made of cisternae, which are these flattened sacs, that very typical of the picture. Um, and it further modifies proteins that came from the rough ER um, and also helps to manufacture um, some macromolecules, although that's sort of a, a lesser component. We often describe the Golgi as um, the post office. It does the final packaging before sending it out of the cell. So here you see these cisternae, these uh, flattened sacs, and inside you have the proteins. This is a uh, vesicle that's bulged off. Here you can see a real um, transmission electron microscope picture of the Golgi and the cisternae and so on. Then we get to lysosomes. Lysosomes are just these sacs of enzymes, hydrolytic enzymes, and they help to digest and recycle things. It's the recycling center or plant of the uh, cell. And we want to keep those hydrolytic enzymes inside the organelle to make sure that uh, they don't get out and start digesting our own proteins and, and uh, enzymes when we don't want them to. Uh, they, uh, they work through phagocytosis. Uh, phage, or P-H-A-G, means consume. You want to think of uh, Pac-Man, for instance. And they envelop the uh, pathogen, or not pathogen, the, the thing that needs to be recycled here. Um, <coughs> excuse me, and draws in, they draw in the components and then begin to digest them using their hydrolytic enzymes. Uh, they also help to promote autophagy, which uh, means sort of self-destruction of uh, organelles and components within the cell itself, or recycling. So any organelles that are damaged, you want to chop them up, reuse the components. Um, Vacuoles, which are found in all different kinds of organisms. Here we're looking at plant or fungal cells. They have several vacuoles, uh, including food vacuoles, um, which house food, of course. And there's also contractile vacuoles uh, found in, for example, paramecium, which help to remove and pump out water. Uh, that's a contractile vacuole. Uh, paramecium is a type of protist. This uh, link will show you 
uh, more specifically, um, an, uh, a video of the paramecium uh, pumping. Central vacuoles are the most common ones that we talk about. They're found in plant cells, and they hold large amounts of water uh, and also some organic compounds uh, that are dissolved in the water. But here you see the uh, central vacuole. And the central vacuole, when it's filled, it actually makes the cell, and more specifically the plant, very turgid. Um, and that uh, turgidity allows the plant to stand up uh, and be strong. And when this is empty, the plant doesn't have enough water, the plant wilts because this central vacuole is empty. This central vacuole fills up, and it creates a pressure or a force on all the other organelles that pushes them against the cell wall uh, within the cell. Uh, so quick review. Uh, the endomembrane system is, uh, is dynamic. It's constantly exchanging things between the different organelles within those compartments. And here you see all of them together, um, the nucleus, the rough and smooth ER passing um, a vesicle off to the Golgi, and then the Golgi further packages it and sends it out to the plasma membrane, where this uh, membrane from the Golgi becomes continuous with the plasma membrane, and uh, through exocytosis releases those proteins destined for somewhere else. We'll take a pause here.